kjære landsmøte, da har jeg gledet å gi ordet til en internasjonal gjest som skal hilse landsmøte. We are very pleased to welcome to the podium the president of the Youth of the European People's Party, Konstantinos Kiranaki. Thank you. Uh, I came here to this uh, Congress a um, couple of years, actually two years ago, as a board member of YEP, and I tried to talk to you about, about a couple of things that I learned uh, from this organization and from this country, Norway. And those, who, those of you who know me personally, um, might have realized that uh, since that moment I kind of fell in love with uh, Norway and I kind of fell in love with uh, this organization Ungehöre. And um, I actually signed up as a member. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> in Oslo Ungehöre. <laughs> And even if I, if I don't, even if I don't live in Oslo, if I, even if I don't live there, I heard uh, there's a switch of leadership. Uh, so uh, Jenny, congratulations! But uh, you must know that I will always be faithful uh, to the guy who recruited me, your predecessor, Christopher Gustafsson. <laughs> yeah. I came back and forth uh, since then. This country, I watched you. Campaign hard, I watched you believing in victory. Uh, I witnessed an organization working hard day after day in a year-long campaign. I watched you uh, becoming better public speakers in this uh, summer camp last year, the debate camp. I watched you uh, winning the school election. What an historic win. And finally, uh, on the election night, I was there when I, I saw all of your faces smiling like never before when uh, Arna Sulberg came in, finally as Norway's Prime Minister. And uh, here we are again in a Congress, in a conference room, uh, in a hotel in the middle of nowhere. I actually asked uh, <laughs> Maria Gettner when we were coming here, why are you having this Congress in, in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> Her answer didn't quite convince me. But anyway, uh, it seems you won everything and there is nothing else to win, right? Wrong. When I look at this room, I don't see faces. I see ideas. And these ideas are not meant to stay here in this hotel facility. They're not born to live and stay in this room. Ideas travel and they travel fast when their time has come. And whether your ideas will reach, whether your ideas will travel and they will reach the right people. It's not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. It is up to you to make that choice. It is up to you to make that fundamental choice and answer to the question why you got into politics at this age, why you're here in this Congress, in this Landsmote. Is sitting in the chair of the delegate is sitting in the chair of the chosen representative of your organization enough? I don't think so. Convincing and inspiring the person who is sitting in the chair next to you is the important thing. Convincing and inspiring the person who is sitting on your left or on your right or in front of you or behind you is the one who you need to look in the eyes and work with them if you want to make your ideas happen. People think today that politics is a completely meaningless thing. And the reason they do that is exactly because most of the conferences' uh, potential of ideas always remains just that. And an idea worth nothing if it, rem if it remains just that. It's time to start making things happening around here. And I want you to know that 
All the people I met who are not in politics are really tired and discuss sometimes of panels and conversations and conferences without a result. You won't imagine how many meaningless panels have been part of uh, in Brussels, uh, in the Brussels bubble that many times here in Scandinavia uh, people talk about, and it's true. And the only way to take something meaningless and make something meaningful out of it is to go out there with your ideas to convince real people. Real politics are about real people. And your job, our job together in politics, is to inspire the people who are not in politics, to serve them, to stand for the people we have never met, that we don't know their names or their faces. Their faces don't matter. Ideas do. Ideas that can make their lives just a little bit better. This is the power of an idea, in my opinion. And if you don't feel it in your heart, if you don't feel it right here, then don't go for it. Because there's surely someone who can do it better than you, and this person might just be sitting right next to you. But if you do, and you're willing to work hard and never give up, then don't let anyone tell you that it cannot be done. The power of youth politics is that there is no limit in the things we can achieve. There is no ceiling in, on top of the things we can achieve. And I think that a fantastic year, like the year you're living behind you today, is the proof that something as inconsequential as a youth organization can get its ideas inside something as, as consequential as the Norwegian government. And this is thanks to you. Uh, but allow me uh, to praise someone among you whose personality and talent, and talent I profoundly admire. And this is your outgoing leader, Palio Aikim. Uh, this is a man who supported me a year ago when I had to win my fight in Europe, and I sincerely thank him for that. This is a man who always kept his eyes ahead. This is a man who inspires, has a capacity to inspire so many people, even people who don't speak his own language, like, for example, myself. Uh, Paulio Akim, I want you to know that I'm inspired by you. You have been a constant inspiration for me and for all of us in YEP. And I want to thank you, you and your team, for everything you did. I want to wish good luck to the new board, Christian. I'm sure you will do a fantastic job. I will stop here. I just want to uh, tell you something before I leave. I am proud, so proud, to come back in this Congress, not as president of YEP, but as member of Ungehöre. Thank you very, very much.